Hi, everybody. I'm Matthew Beckman uh, with Dryas. I'm about a 19-year ops and DevOps veteran uh, and now do DevOps and cloud consulting. I'm going to talk today about uh, the sharing economy in DevOps. So quick economic primer. Uh, in economic theory, supply and demand are sort of the two pillars upon which uh, all things uh, rest. Uh, over time in industries, supply and demand will reach sort of an equilibrium point, which is great for economists and terrible for customers because we don't innovate anymore. Supply traditionally is constrained by infrastructure and demand is constrained by price. And what's been interesting about sharing economy companies is they fundamentally changed a lot of these relationships and offer differentiated experiences for customers. They've done that primarily, first of all, by completely redefining infrastructure and delivery. They found industries that were, pre that were previously constrained and have gone in and changed them through technology or other methods. The other thing that's common across all sharing economy companies is they've flooded the supply side of the equation without dramatically reducing price for services delivered. That's enabled them to go in and disrupt all of these static industries that we read about. So we're going to do some examples here. Um, the first one that's pretty top of mind for all of us is, is transportation. Uh, we've all had wonderful experiences in taxis, I'm sure. We have limited elasticity. We have unreliable or completely unreliable delivery mechanisms, uh, a very fixed supply of vehicles, and really a poor customer experience until some co uh, companies came along and said, hey, we can solve this. We can actually make a highly instrumented delivery pipeline for this, for this service we're trying to deliver. And we can completely flood the supply side of the equation without buying a bunch of taxis and training a bunch of people to be taxi drivers. And the output for all of us as consumers has been a dramatic change in the way we use those services. Lodging is another great example. Hotels have been in stasis for hundreds of years with an infrastructure constraint of building hotels, uh, which gives you really undifferentiated uh, product offerings and a real problem in discoverability to find the few differentiated offerings that exist until some companies came along and said, we can actually solve that too. We can make discoverability a solved problem, which is essentially a delivery pipeline for that industry, and similarly flood the supply side of the equation and offer consumers a great deal more uh, options when they're shopping. So information technology is an industry that we're all pretty familiar with. This is a list of the demand curve in information technology, and it's not even a complete list, right? We all know there's too much to do and not enough people to do it. Uh, other things that are sort of true in traditional information technology is we have unreliable delivery pipelines, we have limited elasticity, we have a deeply constrained supply uh, side of the equation, both in terms of hardware and in terms of labor. Uh, that's all true until this cool thing you may have heard of called DevOps came along, and DevOps has changed that for us. We now have continuous and reliable delivery pipelines that are getting services delivered in a timely manner. And we've been able to flood the supply side of the equation by bringing more labor to it without fundamentally changing the capital investment of the business. And that gives us really a, a, a transformative uh, thing in our infor information technology practice. The great news is there's really two sub fundamental supply constraints here in IT, people and infrastructure. Both of these are pretty much solved by DevOps. The good news on the people side is that the dev to ops ratio in almost all organizations is skewed in favor of the devs. There's seven to one maybe dev to ops ratio, maybe 10 to one, maybe in some businesses 20 to one. The only thing that's constraining you from leveraging that supply, that labor supply, is your culture. There's certainly skills uh, that have to be learned along the way, but there's a great deal of unused supply in your teams that can be, uh, it can be focused, excuse me, on those information technology uh, demands. You can already guess what I'm going to say about infrastructure. The cloud has effectively removed infrastructure as a supply side barrier for compute. Anybody who doesn't think there's enough compute available for them right now, um, let's talk later. I have some websites that you can check out. Um, so, so that one's uh, pretty well solved. Um, sorry. Uh, so with that context, I want to talk about a quick pitfall that I see more and more. This is, this is our sort of standard silos, right? There's dev and there's ops and everybody hates everybody uh, and there's way more dev than ops. And you know, this is okay, but it isn't really great. So what teams are doing more and more is they're creating a third silo called DevOps. And this may be a necessary step on your journey to DevOps, but as an end state, you've just constrained your supply side again. You've centered way too much work on far too many people to really unlock the transformative promise of DevOps. So the reminder is, this is what you should be focused on, an integrated team that leverages all of the supply side that you have in your business to really do these transformative things that everybody's been talking about today for your information technology practice. Uh, that is really what I mean when I say many hands make light work, and that, I think, is the promise of DevOps. I hope you've enjoyed the talk. I'm Matthew Beckman, and we're at uh, Dryas.io. Thanks.